All right, guys, welcome back. So uh, the map looks a little different, and mostly because I figured it out and I recorded about 10 minutes of additional video for that last episode. But because of how glitchy and just overall, well, just cruddy version 1.1.2 of Kerbal Space Program is, um, not only did it basically record black the whole time because apparently my video recording software only saw a black screen. I got all the audio, but just the black screen. But also, the game essentially locked up completely on me, and I was actually worried that it happened again, but we're back. <laughs> um, I fixed the orbits. I'm basically just reiterating the things that I stumbled through before. Um, I fix the orbits by moving them in. So you can see that the altitude here is 830 kilometers instead of 850. And same thing with this one here, basically 830 and basically 830. I've got the orbital periods also um, synchronized between them as well, down to the tenth of a second anyway, um, or down to the almost nearly the hundredth of a second. So they should be in orbit pretty much like that the whole time and they don't lose power anymore, which is important. Uh, the blue line is actually a contract. Uh, somebody wants us to put a satellite going the opposite direction. Like, I don't understand that, but okay. That's a contract. We'll do that. Um, yeah, so we have our satellite network up and running, and that's pretty much all it was. The, the satellite was going behind the planet, and I had Ampere, um, essentially the, the mod that tells me about my battery life, you know, similar to Fusebox. Like I said before, uh, I rated my batteries uh, to be rated for 850 kilometers. And they were pretty good. But two of the satellites had an apoapsis above 850. Uh, all of them had an apoapsis above 850, but two of them had one that was way above 850. One of them was 858, not that huge of a deal. Uh, but the other one, Sat 3, the one that kept actually cutting out on me all the time. The, I didn't even realize it. The apoapsis of that satellite was 877. So significantly further away from the planet and as a result had a longer dark time than the batteries were rated for. So to prevent that, instead of moping and saying, oh, I should have put another battery on this thing, let's just move the satellites closer together and shorten their nighttime. So that's what we did. Um, you can technically do this with three satellites up to, I think it's like 780 kilometers. But in order to do it at 780 kilometers, you gotta be like right in the very perfect spots. Um, and that's not really worth it. I usually kind of fall back to the 800s, low 800s. Um, and so 830 is actually where we ended up this time. Um, pretty good, strong, strong connections here. No problems anymore, as far as I can tell anyway. Uh, and we completed the contract. So there you go, where is it? completed and completed the contract. And you can see that the contract itself actually, uh, it checks for these things and then gives us a check mark um, on all of them. So they don't need check marks here. Um, but they did a shakeout test. It was all completed. It had to shake out for one day to, to make sure and finalize it. And it did. Everything's cool. We also pointed one of the dishes away from Kerbin because we pointed it at, you know, Kerbin's moons, stuff like that too. So now we have a bunch of other contracts. And we have all these because at the end of the video, when I was when it stopped recording, um, I went into Mission Control, I updated it fully with all the money we had, um, and then I updated the administration building as well, um, and I upgraded the space plane hangar so I can finally have more than 30 parts. And also the runway is fixed now as well too. So I don't know. I think I did this a previous video, but I don't I don't remember. Anyway, so all of these buildings now are at least tier two with Mission Control being Tier 3. Um, so we can accept all the contracts that come in now if we want to, and I did. I, I, I think we can do every single one of these by their deadlines. So we did, and we started the K-Files Episode 0. Unfortunately, not going to be able to show you how that works, so you're going to have to figure out how K-Files works either on your own, or you can just sort of see the narrative and how it folds or how it unfolds, I guess, as we complete it. Because K-Files is the first, and I believe the only, as of this recording anyway, the only story-based uh, contract pack where you have episodes. 
and you go through it. It's an episodic sort of thing. So episode zero is sort of this introduction to it. And um, in episode zero, or as far as the story goes, the only thing you've missed is essentially um, our guys in the science area and our guys uh, in engineering essentially trying to figure out what's going on with the atmosphere of Kerbin. Uh, apparently our atmosphere are, it has a lower, it's, it's, it's lower pressure, I guess. And they want me to go and take an atmospheric pressure scan in low or flying low and also flying high of Kerbin so that they can get the data they need to analyze and figure out what's happening. So that's episode zero. Um, that's basically what's happening so far. I don't have the ability to do atmospheric pressure scans because that is a experiment that I do not have. So here's the tech tree. Um, I don't have the ability to do atmospheric uh, scans and stuff because I don't have the technology researched for that part. What I need is to get to here, field science. And that has the atmospheric fluid spectrovariometer. <laughs> atmospheric fluid spectrovariometer. Variometer, I don't know, you, you got it. We butchered it, it's awesome, at least I did. Uh, so once I get this part, then I can do, um, then I can do this story. But for now, I can't get there. I don't have the parts for it. What I do have is 142 science. So what can we do with 142 science? I could do landing struts. Could get landing legs. That could be something. Um, I think instead, though, I'm going to save it and then get this command modules or get these command modules so that I can launch multiple Kerbins, or multiple Kerbals. Uh, into space at the same time without having to do like without having to like stack you know command pods on top of each other or something uh, yeah and then advanced electronics will help us with solar panels that we can also then retract back into ourselves which is good and it'll give us Gorsat okay so in this episode what are we gonna do in this episode right because I've already kind of made this into an episode and it's already kind of dragging on. So what are we doing, Charlie? Okay, let's figure out something to do here. I think we should do an altimetry scan of Kerbin. So we're gonna scan Kerbin, uh, scan the surface. And um, yeah, there's probably some other science equipment you could take along for some extra science. Don't forget to analyze the data from your scan once complete for extra science. Yep, so we're gonna scan Kerbin, and do I need to have, um, do I need to have two vessels here? Uh, no, it's just marking, it's just marking the satellite, we don't need that. So achieve an orbit with the following parameters. We need to get, uh, obviously, Kerbin in orbit between uh, 493 uh, kilometers and 499 kilometers above the surface. Um, on both our apoapsis and periapsis, we need very little eccentricity, bas basically flat, um, basically a circular orbit, which is fine. And we need to be between 83.1 and 83.6 degrees inclination. Okay, so that's what we gotta do. So let's get that started. Let's get that party rolling. We're gonna go to the VAB and build ourselves another satellite. Okay, so we're back in the VAB, and we also have a contract active that's from Remote Tech, telling us to launch a satellite that can reach the inner planets. Basically, it wants a satellite up in the air that will point to either Mohu, Eve, or Duna. Now, we have three satellites in space that are already pointing at Duna, but unfortunately I did not accept this contract by the time I launched the third one. And so, in order to fulfill the contract, you need a new satellite to do the job. So, new, right there. So this satellite that we put up is going to be able to reach them, which is good because I want some that can reach it in polar orbit anyway. This is gonna be our altimetry scanner scanning uh, satellite. So I want to build something that can do Kerbin, but I'm also gonna build something that has enough Delta V to do Minmus and the moon also. Uh, the problem with that plan though, is that we only have a contract to do the moon. We don't actually have one to do Minmus. So I would have to launch another one to fulfill a contract for Minmus anyway. So this one is going to be targeted towards uh, Kerbin and the moon. Uh, so let's make sure this is right. So launch, put a new satellite right here. Altimetry scan of Kerbin, that's what this one will do. Then it will fly to the moon and 
it will do a scan of the moon as well. Okay, so how do we build it? Well, same thing as before. We're gonna grab a probodobodine and I'm going to pack a bunch of batteries underneath this. So let's take and, should I do the same thing as I did before? I kind of liked our design before, this little, I kind of like that. People might think that's ugly, but I don't know. I kind of like it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it. I like it. Um, take the electrical here. I'm gonna do 1K. Um, I don't need as I don't need as much power this time because I'm not gonna put a whole. Or should I? Should I do it? Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Whatever. Uh, we're gonna actually put four on here just because I don't know how much power this altimetry stuff takes, and there's a good chance that since I'm gonna go to the moon, uh, I might need the extra power for the moon as well. So. I don't know how much power I need for the moon. I guess I'll test it with Ampere once I'm done. Uh, okay, so we've got this. Let's also get our, you know what? This will be way faster. Let's just do this. We'll open the last satellite we launched. Okay, there's the last satellite we launched. Let's open this up. And look, it's already kind of set up for us. Isn't that nice? Um, we're gonna have this one. That's definitely gonna be pointing to Duna. We're gonna have these so that we can see the sphere of influence, which is fine. We're gonna need an extra thing though, something extra on this satellite. And that extra thing is, if I go to the science section, is this. This is the scan radar altimetry sensor. You have saw this already. It was on the plane we had before. Uh, so this one is going to basically, if I can get it to do this, we're gonna have this thing scan surfaces. Won't that be sweet? Yeah. Now the problem I have with this is that it's going to create a lot of torque on the vessel because it's un it's not balanced. So I need to put something on the other side that balances it out, right? So, and you can see the torque right here. This is the measure of how off we are, if you will. So what else can we put on this? Well, how about another satellite? How about another dish? Can we do that? I don't know don't know. Maybe we put some of these dishes, maybe these dishes aren't in this configuration on this satellite. Maybe this satellite is more like, um, kind of like this. And then we take and copy that. And we bring another one like this. Uh, yeah, let's do it like this. All right, so our torque is now 0 0.03. Not bad. I can fly a ship with 0 0.03. Pretty sure I can. But just to make sure, right, let's take this communitron off of here and bring it over and put it out here. Uh, it doesn't do anything. Okay, didn't change a damn thing. That's fine, we'll leave it there anyway. Um, what else can we put on here to maybe equalize this out? We, need, we gotta have it balanced. So how about a light? How about a little light? Mm -hmm. All right, so that does a little bit. So let's maybe put a light there, put a light there, put a light down like near the bottom, maybe like, Here maybe, there we go. Actually, I don't think we need this light here. Yep, we absolutely didn't need that light. That tiny little Omni light, I'm telling you. Okay, so now we have no torque on the vessel, which means we are balanced, okay? So we're balanced. So we have this scanner, which actually I probably could move up a little bit now. So let's actually take the scanner and move it up a little higher. There we go, oh, now there's torque again, so let's move it down. Hmm, this is interesting. It's actually like sinking into the, sinking into the tank. That's better, I think, I can't tell. Okay, so this will come out like that. As long as it doesn't interfere 
with solar panels, we're good. And it doesn't look like it will. I mean, it might. So what I could also do is take the solar panels, and just move them lower, like that, and now it won't be a problem. Okay, cool. Then we got these, these dishes here, which is good. We've got this stuff here, this one antenna here, and all this up here. Cool. Should I put any other science experiments on this? I could. How about reusable experiments? We'll put reusable experiments here. That way, if we're over top of a certain biome or something, we can, uh, you know, we can run the science. So uh, we'll, we'll only need to do, we'll only be able to do reusable ones. So uh, let's do a well, pressure barometer. Actually, we can probably use the science experiments to offset this weight. So let's put the barometer there put the thermometer there. And I think that's pretty much the only reusable ones we should use. Um, there's the magnetometer boom, which we could put there, but that's gonna create a lot of torque. Not interested in creating torque. These aren't doing anything. Okay, so that's what we'll do there. We have 0 0.01 uh, on the torque. Not a huge deal. I'm gonna just go ahead and leave it alone from right there. Uh, I mean, I could, if I really, really cared, I could put another light like here. Uh, and that doesn't even do it. So maybe I'll put it like here. Yeah, I don't think this really matters. actually causing more torque to happen now, so. Whatever, 0 0.01 is fine by me. So there's our satellite. That's the one we're gonna launch up there. So now, do we wanna keep the same launch? Do we wanna keep the same, like, I guess, over, uh, over engineering? Well, it takes more delta V to get into a polar orbit than it does to get into an equ equatorial orbit um, because you don't have the natural rotation of the Earth to help you. Uh, so I'm thinking we might be all right. The thing is though, I don't think we need quite this much fuel. Now we do need to get to the moon though. That's the big thing. So actually let's, let's crank this fuel up. I, I think we're fine here. Um, yeah, because we're gonna need all the Delta V we can get really. So let's just launch this vessel just like it is and uh, we'll see what happens. So uh, make sure we're on good on our staging. We're good on our staging here. Good, good, good. Let's save, and we're gonna, oh, I saved over top of sat three. Well, whatever, we have sat two and stuff, so whatever. Um, let's rename this to sc scanner, and we'll save it as a scanner. Okay, let's launch it. Okay, we're back. And uh, let's go ahead and just launch this up straight. Uh, what I need to do though, is figure out which direction I'm supposed to launch this in. And I really don't know. Um, it needs to be a polar orbit. It wants it to be of 83 something degrees. I don't know if that means, like I don't know if that's a north south thing. I think 83 degrees would be heading north. Um, I think, but I'm not sure. I, I would hope that this is a negative degree and this is a positive degree. So. Let's just hope. We're gonna go north and see what that looks like. It's gonna look a little weird launching off the launch pad that way, but we're gonna do it. And let's do it during the day, yeah? Huh? I don't really wanna do it at night. So let's just warp ahead a little bit and do it in the morning. Hello, sun. And up we go. So we do have a very, very small amount of torque on our vessel. Uh, it's weighted, I think, bias towards towards the uh, towards the south. So um, it's going to be slightly biased against us, but I mean, it's what it's whatever. It's it's essentially a balanced craft. Ten thousand meters.
almost got me. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and rotate. Whoa, not that, not that far. Stop. Ooh, don't come apart, don't come apart, don't come apart. Punch it, punch it, punch it. Oh, man. Oh, no. Maybe I can wait. Punch it. Oh, yeah. Go, go, go. <laughs> we got a hold of it again. Uh, you just got to time it. Time it just right. And now we're up in the atmosphere enough to where I think uh, we'll be good from now on. We're going to be fairly fairly straight from now on. The thing about this, though, or the, the, the hard part about this, though, is that we've lost a lot of Delta V. Lost a lot of good speed, which would have helped us reach the moon, I think, but uh, maybe we'll still reach the moon anyway. Let's hope. Let's hope we'll still reach it anyway. Okay, we're getting ourselves pushing ourselves to the limit here and you just move this down there we go not quite uh, not quite staged the way I wanted to be staged at the time so there we go we are we, we launched towards the north Apple apps is not bad. Needs to go up more though. We may need to relaunch because that was a lot of Delta V loss back there. Um, and I and realistically, I shouldn't have been able to control that. Honestly, if I wasn't so high, I think if I was another maybe 10k lower, even maybe even 5k lower, uh, the crap, the rocket just would have fell apart. There's just too much forces too much atmospheric forces there for that to happen but I think we're fine we got enough Delta V to do what we need to do I think so I'm gonna go like that okay we need another thousand so we'll just uh, tell the flight computer to point to the node how is Kerbal engineer how are we doing here we've got this uh, this stage has so much Delta V we're good Totally good. So in 13 seconds, the flight computer will start its burn and we'll be good to go. And then we're just gonna launch that. And upwards we go. I need to have vessel delta V or stage delta V on one of these hubs. Can I do, um, let's see, hub one. Can I do stage delta V? No, it doesn't look like it. Nope. Okay, well in that case, let's do this then. I'm gonna go show engineer, turn off, go just vessel. Flipped us around, camera flipping us around. That's a good sign of us being in space, which we are in space. We have a apoapsis of 227 kilometers and a periapsis of 85. And we are uh, moving up and we have an inclination of 80 degrees. This is very close. So we did go the right direction. This is very close to where we need to be anyway for this contract. Very cool. So let's take a look at the contract really quick. I'm not sure what all that rocking around is. Um, the cool part about this though, let's go ahead and extend these solar panels. Cool part about this is that we probably won't lose connection, at least not very much, not very well, um, because we've got all these satellites, you know, already in the air, helping us communicate with the KSC. So that's good. So what we need now is a telemetry scan of Kerbin. Um, we need our vessel to be uh, 
Um, interesting. This is weird. What is this telling me to do? It looks like it wants me to do set two. Um, I don't know what that's all about. I don't know why it's telling me to do it with sat two, but um, all right, well, whatever. Let's just try and achieve this orbit here. So we've got 83 degrees and 86, and we need to get up to about 490 something. So what I'll do, I guess, is we'll go to the Apo Apsis. Yeah, I don't know what this camera's doing. Um, we'll go to the apoapsis, and we are going to burn prograde until we are up to about 490 something. Yeah, that's good. Pretty good right there. So we'll go ahead and node and execute. All right, so that's gonna execute that burn. Uh, it's going to be 238.9 delta V. That's, whoa, what is, oh, I, th I thought that was like a freaking comet or something. It's just my UI. I'm really not sure why that contract is telling me to do a specific vessel. Or why we have constant graphical problems when we try to do anything with our ships. Look at this, like, what is this rocking around? I, I, just, I don't know. It's doing it again. What in the world? Huh? There's a lot of things I don't know what's going on here, guys. A lot of things I don't know. Let's make another maneuver at the Apoaps. And we're gonna bring it up to where the Periaps is. Or bring, bring the Periaps up to where the Apoaps is. And in 20 seconds, we'll have another thing. And it's still sh rocking and shaking all over the place. I have no idea why. Must be that torque. It's got to be the torque, right? The 0 0.01. I don't know. It's the only thing I can think of that would make it shake like that. Okay, so we have, uh, let's set the target for this to the moon. We'll launch that up. Let's set the target for this one to be Minmus. Set that up. Set the target for this one. Uh, where is it? On the back here, here it is. This one will be uh, active vessel. And then uh, we'll start our scan of the planet now too. So where is the planet? It's over there. Okay. And then we'll point this to Duna. Uh, and then we're going to take this and we will start our radar scan. Up we go. Oh yeah, we are now analyzing the surface of Kerbin. So this is our area where we're analyzing, right? We're just gonna kind of read the surface as we move around. That's how it works. But we're not in the, not quite in the right incline yet. So, um, so I don't mess up the map too bad. Nah, whatever. It's all going to get scanned anyway. It'll all work itself out. We're going to need to correct our inclination. So right now we have 80.0216 degrees. And in order to complete the contract, it wants us to get to 83.1 and to 83.6. Okay. So let's see about getting that. Now, I normally need to do it on the equator. So let's just because I don't want to mess it up. So let's do it right here on the equator. Yep. 
and we're just going to burn uh, not quite it's this way yep keep going keep going keep going and right about there so I'm looking at over here on precise node or precise maneuver it says 83.38 degrees is where that will end up being. And um, so 83.38 degrees is I think what we need. Eighty three point three eight is within the range, so that will work. Okay. So we will be executing that maneuver while we scan the planet. What are we scanning for? I don't know. Low resolution altimetry scan. It's it's probably terrain details, uh, like a height map, so you can get the slopes, so you can see sort of it just sort of the landscape, I guess. Checking out the landscape of our planet from above, you know. Okay, and we're getting ready to do the maneuver. And our orbit is now going to adjust. And we have the inclination that we need. So let's check the contract. Uh, ooh, now our eccentricity of our orbit is off. Oh, our apoapsis has now come outside the boundaries of where we wanted it to be. That's okay though, we're on the periapsis. So let's go ahead and point orbital retrograde. We're on the periapsis. We should be able to fix this fairly quickly. Just burn a little bit retrograde. And take a look at our contracts and we're good. But we're not using this one, which is just stupid. Okay, well. That's that, so we'll scan the planet. And um, yeah, if it doesn't give me the contract, then I'll just pass it through the debug menu because that's totally right on. I don't know why it's stuck on one craft, probably just another bug. Um, should I get another one? I'm not gonna launch another one yet actually because if I launch another one, then the contract that comes to do it, the contract that tells me to go to Minmus and do it, for example, um, that one will need a new vessel again, and I'd rather use it again. So let's go back to the Space Center. So Capcom's not showing us as having completed that yet, but that's okay. We have one that we're going to do of the moon, which is cool. We'll get that done soon. I guess get that done when the other one's done. Um, readings on the surface, all these things can be worked out off camera, no big deal launch a satellite that can reach the inner planets. Okay, well, I've got all that done. I'm, I'm orbiting Kerbin, am I not? I think it's performing the shakeout test now. Yeah, situation orbiting Kerbin. Okay, so I'm, I am, it's, it's passing me here, I'm good. And now it's just doing the shakeout test. For three days, it needs to shake that out. Okay. So we can also do this satellite if we want to. This one goes the opposite direction. Not sure what we would be, what use would this would be, why anyone would want to do that. But I'll think I'll just do that uh, myself off camera because like launching satellites and stuff is not. Oh, we're just gonna launch another one off around Kerbin. Eh. If you guys want to see it, cool. I guess let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I'll just do it uh, off camera. But. Anyway, I think that's pretty much good for this episode. It's kind of short. We got a lot of bugs to work through and I'm kind of annoyed by the fact that we have all these bugs. Um, I can get enough science to unlock the next node here and I think I'm gonna get enough, get enough science to unlock this, this command module here so we can start sending more Kerbals to space. Uh, and we can do rescue missions this way too, easier this way. Um, but I need a little bit more science, about 18 or so, 17 and a half, but I can do surface samples of all these different places around the KSC. I haven't done surface samples around there yet. So I will do that and uh, unlock the command modules. And then I will see you next time. How's that? Take care guys, bye.